thank you, Dr. Dorji, for being here. This is uh, media coverage from the conference. I will ask you which are the main uh, message from this uh, session. Well, this was a session this afternoon that we try to do every time we come to the, the uh, IAS and AIDS conferences, where we summarize our newest guidelines. And here we brought a lot of different kinds of guidelines, but together they make a set of tools that countries can use for implementing better practices and for HIV. So the first guidelines that we brought forward were guidelines around how we can use HIV self-testing in other places, in other settings, how can we start to incorporate STI testing as well, or sexually transmitted infection testing. And that was an important piece for the first set of guidelines. Then we moved on and we discussed guidelines around um, treatment for sexually transmitted infections. Uh, and there's at least two large documents that we've come out with new guidelines around how to treat our three, four main sexually transmitted infections, which include syphilis, gonorrhea, um, trichomonas, and chlamydia. And then another sister document around some of those other STIs that are important, which include mycoplasma, genitalium, um, some of the more neglected sexually transmitted infections. And it's important that we update our guidelines, in particular because we've started to see for gonorrhea drug resistance. So we've included a new recommendation for a higher dosing of the, of the drugs used to treat gonorrhea. Yeah. So that's one important document yeah. we had. Very important. So what about PEP and PrEP? Yes, that was another set of sister documents, we can call them. They're two guidelines. So we already had guidelines both on PEP and PrEP. So these are updates. And the update to the PEP guideline, or pre-exposure prophylaxis, really was to simplify and to ensure that people had access to PEP and that they use a three-drug regimen for PEP. So I think it's about ensuring that all measures and all opportunities for prevention are well known and well utilized. And what we had found and what we heard about in the panel is not PEP or post-exposure prophylaxis is not used as often as we would like. So PEP, post-exposure prophylaxis, then we also updated our pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP guidelines, and those simplified those guidelines even more so they can be used more widely to prevent more infections, especially for people who may be worried about the fact that they have high risk settings um, and, and making it much more simple to say, how can you implement PrEP? Yeah, I think this is a challenge to implement these, yes, yes. these guidelines. Thank you for being here. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>